<laughs> Let's run through some NBA stories because yeah. you go to Chicago. Dude, you worked at Circuit City yeah. with the Bulls. How did that happen? Man, you know, um, I was 19 years old, and I was, um, I was running the streets of Chicago. You know, I was... And if you know Chicago, if America knows Chicago, mm -hmm. I should not have been certain places in mm -hmm. Chicago. Now, I'm not saying I was in danger because if, if you're from a, a, a community and you go to a hood and they, they respect where you're from, so I didn't go there as like a gangster. I wasn't in these neighborhoods, but I was, I was in places I shouldn't have been and, you know, partying a little too much. Mm -hmm. And I saw my performance wasn't happening. So Circuit City was a place where my friends were working at the time. And I said, you know what? After practice, I got so much time. And I'm driving to Chicago. And I'm just, you know, doing all sorts of things I shouldn't be doing. Might as well be productive with my time. Yeah, I needed to be productive. I was trying to do anything to stay occupied. I was 19 years old. I had two, two, two kids mm -hmm. at, at the time already. And so, I, you know, a parent, professional player, getting in trouble. It was just too much. Yeah. And I was trying to be as positive as I can at it as a 20-year-old, 19-year-old kid. No, I totally understand. Once the Bulls found out, they're like, you know what, can you come back to the facility? But I get where you were at that point yeah. in your life, you know? Yeah, definitely. You know, um, it was just, yeah, I was at the point where I just wanted to be positive, productive, you know, all, all the time. No, I feel you. So when I think about your story, mental health is obviously a huge part of it. And, you know, it's hereditary in your family. Yeah. And thinking about some of the early stops in your career, because there were teams like the Pacers, like the Bulls, tried to get you the proper help that you Absolutely. needed at the time. So when you reflect on that now, what did you need at that time and what was working at that time for you? So as I reflect on my uh, emotional unbalance mm -hmm. at that time, I think it was more, um, a, a lot of it has to do with the family. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm 19 at that time, but my parents separated at 13. Right, that, that's a huge thing. It's a huge thing, it's yeah. a huge thing. It's not as easy for people to deal with. And then I had my first baby at 17. So three years before that, my parents just separated. I'm entering into a relationship where I don't really understand how to be in a relationship, mm -hmm. yet alone 16 years old. I wouldn't even advise my 16-year-old child to have a baby and be in a relationship. Right. I was with uh, my wife at the time. We were together for like 17 years. I made a lot of mistakes in between that. I wasn't mature, you know, and but who, what 17-year-old, 18-year-old kid is mature? Right. With what 21-year-old? With a life-changing moment like having a child and also going to the NBA and getting having millions a of child, dollars. Having a child and then going to the NBA. Right. You know, still young, seeing other women. Mm -hmm. You know, it was, a, it was a stressful time. Trying to do the right thing. Right. You know, it was very confusing at that time. And... You know, I wish um, I could have handled things differently, but, you know, what you going to do? And the conversations about mental health weren't in the same place. And, like, even in the documentary, it's mentioned, like, you weren't talking to your teammates about no. stuff. You were very closed off and in your own world. So yeah. what was the most difficult part of that situation? Why did you feel like you couldn't talk to your teammates about certain things? The reason I, I feel like I couldn't talk to my teammates is because if you have a problem and you go to one of your teammates or you go to uh, one of your front office people or coach, you're thinking, like, they're going to, think something's wrong with you, mm. they're not going to sign into a contract. Right. You know? All these crazy things going through your head. Um, then you're thinking, if you tell someone about you, 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 you're vulnerable. Right? Yeah. And then is that whole trust factor, is that whole someone disappointing you? you someone know, judging you. Um, judging. And one good example could be, you know, if you're a kid, you love your parents or you love your friends so much or your girlfriend, whatever the case may be, and um, they let you down, you know? All those things was things that I was guarding. And new friends, I, was, I didn't really trust a lot of people, you know, so the whole new friend thing, having to sit in front of someone and talk um, and thinking I don't really trust you. Yeah. No, it's a difficult thing. <laughs> You know, it's like, it's crazy, man. And um, there's things I laugh about now. Um, like, you know, guys like Al Harrington, one of, one of, one of the best friends a person can mm -hmm. have. Yeah, one of your ride or die guys, yeah. Uh, yeah well, I, I haven't been through a lot with Al Harrington in terms of 
Like I've been with Steve Jackson and Jerry right. O'Neill. Yeah, yeah, different story with those. But guys. in terms of like, when he before he left, he's a good friend. Reaching out, hey, come over to the house. Hey, let's get some lunch. Jermaine O'Neal, hey, let's get some lunch. Are you all right? And, you know, um, that's why I always tell people to make sure you keep your relationships. I always tell my players that I coach, players that I mentor, you know, make sure you keep your, all your relationships. And basketball is not the most important thing. Mm. Well, you mentioned relationships, and one of the most interesting parts to me was the whole Jermaine O'Neal relationship. Yeah. I didn't realize the extent of things with you guys, yeah. the difficulty in that relationship. And yeah. I thought he was very honest in terms of, feelings he had for you, Man. some disappointment, some hate. Man. So what was it like for you to, to hear that all? And you guys didn't speak for 14 years or hey, whatever. What was that like for you to watch that? See, look, this, this is the thing with Jermaine. Jermaine's from the hood, too. Mm -hmm. You know, Jermaine just handled things way more professionally than me. He was, he was ready for the NBA. I wasn't. Okay? Jermaine is a really good friend, right? So to anyone. So if Jermaine is your friend and you kind of turn your back, yeah, I would mm. be upset too, you know? For me, you know, I never wanted friends and I really didn't care how somebody else felt, which is the wrong approach. I mean, if you don't want friends, you still can respect other people. I didn't have no respect. You weren't even thinking about that at the time. I don't know if I'd have no respect, but I was frustrated, whatever the case may be, it was kind of disrespectful when, you're, when somebody supports you, then the next year you come back and you say, hey, you know, I want to uh, trade. Mm. You know, like, you want something better. Right. Or I want something better, or I don't like the people I'm around. Like, I don't like, you know, Jermaine or Donnie or, or Steven or Jamal Tinsley or Anthony Johnson, you know, or Scott Pollard. You know, like, I don't, you mean I don't like these people? Mm. You know, it's questions I ask myself sometimes. Or I want something better. I want to go to another team. Why? Because, and... As a young player, immaturity, you know, not responsible, um, ego. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, Egos are huge things e in a team like know, that. Ego could kill you. Yeah. 